Figma looks very different in 2025, especially with the release of Figma sites. The lines between what makes a no-code website builder and a design tool seem to be getting more and more blurry. So in this video, I'm gonna take a closer look at Figma. Compare it to website builders I use daily, like Wix Studio, and hopefully this comparison will give you a better insight into what you should be using for building your own websites. Before 2025, Figma was great when it came to doing things like app design or website design, something that you would do before you take a piece of design to code or then to publish on something like Wix Studio. Until now. This is Figma Sites. Apparently, it'll allow me to take a website that I've designed on Figma and then publish it online, and it'll also be responsive and easy to edit. But how does this look like in practice? What's it like when it comes to things like SEO? And how does it compare against other site builders? Let's take a look right now. Figma Sites is something that you're not gonna have by default. I've actually had to upgrade my plan here to Pro in order to be able to access it, but I assume that they might release it to be free in the future. Here it is. Now, there are a few different options here. There's like blank site, read CV template. I'm gonna go with this exercise one, which I saw earlier, which I thought would be a good example to use for this video. If I select a preview, it gives me these options here for a homepage, about us page, reserve page, as well as what looks like a style guide and a preview thumbnail. Now, if I go here to the homepage, this is what's pretty cool. You get to see both the desktop version, the tablet version, and the mobile version of the website. Now, if you compare this to something like Wix Studio, let me go here and create a new site from template. I'm gonna do exercise here. There's a lot more templates to choose from, but here I'm gonna select something like this CrossFit one over here. And so here's the Wix Studio version, and let's just have a comparison between the two canvases to see how they work, because here inside of Wix Studio, we have the three viewports, a desktop, tablet, and mobile. And for Figma, we also have these three viewports, but they work fundamentally different. For the Wix Studio one, when you're in the desktop viewport, you can expand and shrink within the desktop viewport. For the tablet, you can do the same, but you're locked into the maximum and minimum values, the same as with mobile. This does mean that making those designs make it quite fixed and you know what you're going to get when you're in those viewports. In terms of Figma sites, when I have a desktop site, I can expand it out and shrink it down. But as you can see, some of the styling and everything breaks because of the fact that this desktop viewport at 400 pixels width just doesn't work. This is a little bit odd. And this is the same as with the other viewports. Like this one here is a mobile viewport. It works in mobile, but it allows me to expand out to over a thousand pixels. And when I do that, you can see that the styling starts to break down. I think that at least Wix has a better idea of locking that styling in. So I'm just gonna undo some of these changes and primarily I would encourage not to even change these viewports. So when you select to add them in, you just keep them locked at that viewport without modifying them and then just modify the design itself. The benefit of the version from Figma here is that I can actually expand out and zoom in a lot further than I could, for example, in the Wix Studio version. Yes, I can zoom out like this to get a single view of a single page and I can zoom closely in, but I do like the way that Figma gives you a little bit more flexibility on the canvas and viewing multiple pages on the same sort of canvas as well. The next thing I wanna take a look at is importing different types of designs. Now there are ways to do this on Wix and on Figma. For Figma, I have this previous design I created earlier using a little bit of Flowbyte, and it's also using auto layouts, which is pretty cool. But the main thing here is that it's a one entire design, and so I can copy over this design. Now, in terms of Figma sites, what I should be able to do is simply select to create a web page here, and then paste. And if I select play on this thing, here it is. If I collapse it down, to a mobile viewport, it's not really becoming responsive, but let's select play and add a tablet viewport and a mobile viewport. And those look like they should be collapsing. They don't look great, but they look like they're being responsive. So let's click play again. And now it looks like it is being responsive, though I wouldn't say this is a great design adhering to like the full width. There are some problems here that we could fix up. At least this gives me an insight as to how this works. But let's have a look at how the Figma to Wix Studio version would work. So let's create a brand new site here with a blank canvas on Wix Studio. 
Instead here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call one of the plugins, Figma to Wix Studio. And here we're gonna set this up. So we need to go here into Wix Studio, go to Tools and Import from Figma. So let's do that now. So up here, Tools, Import from Wix Studio. Let's give this a test. I'll paste this in, click Connect. It says importing from Figma. So I guess it's running in the background. Let's give this a little bit of a moment. And you can see here it's being created as we speak. And here's that design. And in terms of the size itself, it is kind of responsive <clears throat> in the way that it's currently scaling. So there is this one thing I do like with Wix Studio. It's this icon here called responsive AI. This just means that it's gonna generate the responsive breakpoints for this section here to just work on tablet and mobile viewports without me having to do anything. Let's take a look at this in action. It's just finished and if I collapse this down to a tablet viewport, the fonts got smaller and so did the icons. And then on a mobile viewport, it collapsed this horizontal row into a vertical one. So that's pretty much exactly what I needed it to do. And while I haven't done it for each section, it just makes that process a little bit easier. Here on Figma sites, I guess it's kind of done the same thing since it's using auto layouts, but I would need to make additional adjustments to this, such as with the padding here. It does feel like there are some overlapping sections that have gone a little bit wonky on here, which might be a bit more difficult to manage. But uh, yeah, that's at least one difference because I don't think I can use AI to fix this up in here. I do have this AI button, um, but it's just letting me do things like replace images or text content. What I wanna do is publish both sites now. I'm gonna select publish here on Figma sites, and this will go through and generate this URL over here, which you can access. And for the Wix version, I'm just gonna select up here at the top right to publish, and this generates this temporary URL that I can view. Here is the one from Figma, and here is the one from Wix. You can see that it's done a pretty good job at importing them, but I wanna have a look at the underlying structure for things like SEO, how responsive it is, and essentially how the code structure looks like under the hood. I'll hit F12 here to open up the code and take a look at the structure, and boy, that's a lot of divs. What it looks like is that Figma Sites is creating a div anytime there is a container or a section or anything really, until it finds some text. In that case, it seems to create a P tag with an after tag for some sort of letter spacing. I don't think anything's happening there. And as I go through, it has a lot of that, but there's not much markup that's happening besides that. But for the most part, I would say that if I was looking at the code structure for these, it would be pretty tough to understand what's happening. And this is one of the complaints I've heard about how these sites are put together. I really wonder if it would be able to adapt some of these labels better when it comes to creating the code, but right now it doesn't look like it's doing that. Now in terms of the Wix site, let's jump in here and have a look at this code structure. So from the get-go, there seems to be a little bit more markup here. Each item is kind of separated out to different sections, but there still is a lot of divs happening. But I do believe that there are things like H3 elements happening. Uh, let's have a look at this. This is a P tag happening. Uh, so kind of similar, but kind of different. I guess if I double check this title here, this title I would expect it to be a H3 tag, but obviously it's not. So it really depends. Is that because our template isn't properly organized or is that because Figma sites just hasn't improved on their SEO. So for this, I would definitely say that maybe Wix Studio is doing a little bit of better job and I would be very cautious as to the structure of some of these items if you're going to be using Figma sites. Let's resize these pages and again, you can see that some bizarre stuff is happening when I resize the page. I wouldn't call this responsive by default and this is their template, so it should be one of their better examples of how responsive design works. Let's try the same here on the Wix Studio site. So I've got this section here we created responsive before, and this is resizing and then collapsing. I'd say that's pretty good responsive design in comparison. There is one thing that I do like about the Figma sites, and it's that if I make changes 
to one part of the site. Like if I remove this button over here, it gets removed from all the other viewports. If I was to delete this image or maybe if I was to resize it, it's kind of showing me a quick preview of all three sites. I did try this down here, but for some reason, it didn't work. I'm not sure if I didn't copy this out, like it kind of updates this section when I delete it. But if I edit this one section here, it doesn't seem to update. So I'm not too sure if this is just glitchy behavior. And at least I do know that with the Wix version, if I was, for example, to go into the viewport here and delete this and go back to the mobile viewport, it has been deleted. If I was to delete this in the mobile viewport, it actually gives me an update saying that it's not going to delete it from all breakpoints or it will. So in this case, I don't want it to delete from all breakpoints. I just want to hide it. And now it's hidden on tablet but visible on the desktop. So it gives me a bit more flexibility for responsive design, but I wish that I could get a little bit of that multi-site viewing where I can see all responsive viewports on a single page. So there's pros and cons for both. Now there's a lot more we could take a look at between how the inspector works. If you used Figma before, you should know how auto layouts work versus how Wix Studio works in terms of positioning and docking. But these are all nuances that once you get into a piece of software, you learn and you get to use. What I'm most excited about is how these tools start using AI in different approaches. Right now, we can do things like add images, edit images, or rewrite sentences in Figma. It's not much, especially for this brand new product. While in Wix Studio, you can do all sorts of stuff like responsive design with AI, creating entire sitemaps with AI, as well as then updating the text and content and images using AI. It's almost to the point where you can create an entire site with AI. And hopefully Figma brings some of these things into the future. But right now, I guess they're just building up a space where you can create some of the content of sites and publish them all within one platform. And while I think Figma has done a great job at being able to design websites or UIs, I'm not sure if their Figma sites is quite ready. And I guess that's why it's probably still in beta. 